Miss Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, May 19th to Saturday, May 25th. Okay, so last week we had Mercury clear his post retrograde shadow period on the 13th. That's when there were new thoughts, new perspectives, new understandings finally coming clear. Now, we only had a couple of days to sit in that particular energy because on the 15th, well, first of all, we have that first quarter moon in Leo really pushing us into our heart space, pushing us into being bold and brave and courageous to take action, to make a change, to actually choose to decide what we want to pursue from here. But shortly thereafter, Mercury actually moved into Taurus energy. We put the blinders on. We become a little bit more tunnel vision and focused on what needs to be done. We are thinking very logically, very practically, but we're also not rushing the process because that low, slow, steady energy of Taurus just slows that mental plane down, of course, coming out of that Aries energy that, of course, Mercury was retrograde in. We had too many windows open in our brains. There were too many kind of pop-ups. We were scatterbrained. We were aggressive with our thoughts. We were aggressive with our communications, but we were kind of all over the place. The Taurus energy, it's a fixed energy. So there is a stabilizing force that actually takes over our mental plane. We're able to kind of focus and concentrate a little bit better. However, we become a little bit stuck on certain thoughts, certain ideas, certain looping narratives. That is the cautionary note. However, it is providing us with a little bit more clarity, a little bit more of a calm energy in our headspace that, of course, is not going to last very long because we just kind of wrapped up that last week of Taurus season. This week, we're jumping into Gemini season here on the 20th, and you best believe that that is when there is going to be a major change in energy, major change in mood, in attitude, in time, in space. We are moving into an accelerated time and space season because what comes after Gemini season is cancer season. That is the summer solstice. That is a reset in the karma. That is why Gemini season, although kind of represented by the twins and we are in a internalized debate between the old and the new and the ego self and the higher self, we have a lot of choices to make. There's going to be a buzz. There's a pressure in the head space. Mercury is in his rulership over Gemini season, things are going to pick up the pace. If you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that the low, slow, steady pace of Taurus energy had us kind of feeling stuck, had us feeling on pause. And I've been saying you should really learn to enjoy that particular energy because Gemini season is going to turn the volume all the way up on this accelerated time frame, these choice points, in order for us to make a decision, for us to align with a path, a plan, a strategy, a direction, in order for us to lock that in come cancer season. So not only are we moving into Gemini season this week, we have a full moon taking place in Sagittarius energy, which is the most optimistic, big, great, grand dream and vision type of energy that we could get for a full moon. And even more so than that, we have Venus conjuncting Jupiter on that full moon Sag day just as Venus moves into Gemini on the 23rd, on the same day. So yes, we have a full moon in Sag, we have a Venus Jupiter conjunction, and then Venus moves into Gemini energy all on the same day. So the 23rd is definitely going to be a little bit crazy as far as the energy is concerned. And again, picking up the pace, picking up, I'm going to say the speed in our decision making, in our exploration, in our research. The Gemini energy, of course, has us peaked mind, body and soul. We are looking outside of ourselves, outside of what was normal, outside of this little comfort zone for something different, for stimulation. There's a new curiosity taking over and we just want to venture out to see if the grass is really greener on the other side. And of course, as if all of that wasn't enough, on the 
fifth, Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, is about to move out of the Taurus energy that we've been in since May of 2023. We're moving into Gemini energy the first time in 12 years. So of course, that is a major event as well. It's going to have a major impact on the collective, major impact on us as individuals as well, because of course, Jupiter is the wisdom I guess, that we've accumulated through the tough love life lessons that we've all had to go through. And Gemini energy is all about information and communication. So you could just guess what this next year is going to be about. And if you're still wondering, if you can't put that together, there will be an astral forecast coming at you over the course of this week to kind of help us hone in on what this is specifically going to mean for us, collectively speaking, and as individuals. So I'm not leaving you, you know, with a cliffhanger there. There is more information to come. However, Jupiter bringing the wisdom, Gemini bringing the information. Again, reminder, we're in the year of eight. It's time to walk the walk and talk the talk. We have the boss up, stand in our power, stand in our control as creators of our physical reality. So this is definitely going to be a huge magnification, a huge focus on new information, new perspectives coming in, new skills and talents that need to be learned, and our ability to actually integrate the wisdom, the knowledge that we've already accumulated in our everyday life. So that is going to be a very interesting transit for all. And again, major, major week coming at us. So, of course, with all of these major energy shifts, we can expect there to be some major ascension symptoms. But before I jump into listing off the highs, the lows, the everything in between, I just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below, making it a very beautiful page and channel to scroll through. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, that have tested it out some of the let's call it free slash paid content over there I want to thank you so much for that and I want to thank any and all of you that have decided to show your love and support in all of the different ways it is a major major thing in my life I am super super grateful for all the love and support and the continued love and support and so I just want to take this moment to thank you all for showing up for me but also for yourselves so with that being said, uh, the Taurus Season E-Guide, if you've been working with that Taurus Season E-Guide, we're coming to the end of Taurus Season. There is going to be a new Gemini Season E-Guide available to you over the next couple of days. And of course, if you are over on my Patreon, that is included in some of the tier subscriptions over there. I am going to switch things up, I think, on my Patreon. I think I'm going to kind of include all tiers when it comes to the energy shifts throughout these particular zodiac seasons. That is the best way that I can come up with right now to get people interested in doing the work. So again, if you want to jump over to Patreon as a free member, you'll be able to sample some of that paid content. And of course, if you are a paid member on Patreon, expect some changes coming at you throughout Gemini season. Of course, Gemini season is a mutable sign. Immutable signs are all about change. It's all about switching things up, keeping, you know, a little bit of spice of life, keeping things exciting and interesting. And so it is a prime opportunity for me to make some changes and adjustments to the delivery system of the information and content in which I put out there. And so again, have things bubbling in my mind space and looking to really tweak some of those particular delivery systems over the course of Gemini season. If you want to know where all of these events are taking place in your life, again, please download the Zodiac forecast for May. There's your individual Zodiac forecast that you can get on my website or of course jump over to Patreon. They're included in some of the subscription tiers over there where you can access all 12. Why would you want to access all 12 you may ask? Well because really exploring your big three is going to give you the biggest broadest picture on where it is that you can expect some of these energies to be influencing your life the most. So we want to stay ahead of the game. Of course, we talked about the fact that there is a full moon that we are building towards. And anytime we are building towards a full moon, 
Things are growing. Things are increasingly getting more and more intense as we anticipate that full moon peaked energy that brings a full illumination, full new perspective to some of the hidden information and details that were kind of not in our peripherals up until this point. Of course, with the full moon on the calendar, there will be a brand new episode of the, the Moon Guide where we're going to do a deep dive into this full moon in Sag, what that's all about. I think it's very interesting. I'll just give you a couple of highlights here. Um, first of all, full moons are usually a turbulent time because it's a releasing point. It's a purging point. Sag energy, Jupiter rules over Sag energy, and it's as optimistic, as confident as we can get. We dream big dreams and visions. We really believe that anything is possible. And so as far as full moons go, full moon and Sag is pretty magical because we're kind of contradicting what a full moon is all about. It's supposed to kind of illuminate those not so nice thoughts and feelings and bring them to the surface for our awareness for our integration but this isn't going to be that sag energy is just too magical too optimistic for that and because the sag energy is about a new truth a new authentic vibration this new version of self that we've been working on is going to come out to play we are wrapping up a cycle and we are preparing for a brand new quest a brand new adventure and even more than that where Jupiter is in his rulership over this particular full moon in Sag, Jupiter is at the final degrees of the Taurus energy. Again, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in her rulership up until we enter into Gemini. And then she kind of gets dethroned, so to speak. But she's going to be conjuncting, which is a reset with Jupiter on that same full moon day before she shifts into Gemini energy, really giving up her rulership uh, out of that Taurus energy, let alone Taurus season. So again, I think it's a very interesting dynamic that all of these conjunctions are popping off, especially, you know, in that Taurus energy. And then everybody is shifting into this Gemini energy. And again, Jupiter at the end of this week, major transition. And we are going to feel the, I'm going to call it anticipation of that particular transit, that shift under that full moon energy. So should be a very, I'm going to say long moon guide episode, which again, last, last, the last episode, I kind of condensed everything because I was letting people get into my head and telling me that I talk too much and that I spend too much time focused on the things that not people are interested in. And then I don't know. I don't know why I even listened to those particular voices because I ended up rushing through that particular episode only to find out that people actually like to listen to me rant and rave. They like when I take my time and go into depth and detail on how some of these aspects impact us. And so I kind of felt like not only did I rip myself off, but I ripped other people off in the last episodes so where we're not doing that anymore. That'd be about the last time that I let people get into my head and have me kind of change my delivery system to try and make people happy. You know, we're, we're still in this, you know, node experience between the Aries and Libra and energy. That Libra and energy is people pleasing. And I'm not really a people pleaser. So I had no clue why I changed things up, but I will not be doing that again. So if you're in for a very detailed, lengthy rant about this very interesting full moon in Sag, definitely stay on top of me launching that new episode. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's talk about some of the ascension symptoms that we can expect in the week to come. So first of all, let's just kind of remind ourselves that we're at the tail end of Taurus season. Anytime that we're nearing the end of any type of transit and we find a planet at those final degrees, there's always some pressure. There's always some intensities. Now, Taurus season has been very low, very slow, very heavy, very weighted, again, almost to a snail's pace. And that particular energy, yes, is going to continue to make us feel like we're trying to run through the mud here up until the 20th when the sun shifts into Gemini energy. And then literally at the snap of the fingers, literally overnight, we're going to wake up and we're going to feel lighter and brighter like the world had just taken the weight off of our shoulders. We're going to be able to kind of get 
our headspace in gear again. Now, we're talking about headspace when it comes to Gemini energy. There's going to be a lot of pressure in the head. But the days leading up to the 20th, so I'm coming at you here Friday, the May 17th, so we only have a couple of days. And let me also just remind you, here on Saturday, May 18th, we have some pretty serious conjunctions as well. We have Venus conjuncting with Uranus. We have the Sun conjuncting with Jupiter. It's a big deal. It's going to be a major shift in energies preparing us for the major shift in energies that we're going to be feeling as we move into Gemini season. So the low, slow, steady, heavy weighted pace is almost over. However, Coming to the end, coming to these final degrees, we have to really expect that the pressure is going to be applied. I would say that we are going to feel very stuck, very much on pause, very limited, very restricted, very heavy, very weighted, not only in our physical body, but in our heart space. Again, Venus nearing the final degrees of her rulership of her particular transit as well. And with the activations that she's got going on over the next couple of days, we're definitely going to feel it in our heart space. What does that mean? Well, I don't think we're going to be so much stuck in grief or stuck in sadness, but we're going to be stuck in a, what I like to call it, anxiety paralysis, meaning we know that we have to do something. We know we have to get something off of our chest. We know we have to make a major change, a major transformation, but are we ready to do it? Absolutely not. Why not? Because the Taurus energy is a fixed earth sign. We procrastinate like a M effort, if I do say so myself, but we know it's coming. We know that it's inevitable. And here's the thing, when we actually get to the point where we initiate this new chapter, where we get some things off of our chest, where we actually take some action to make some moves to progress ourselves on a brand new path, we're going to be like, why did we procrastinate for so long? Why did we put this off for so long? Like, I feel so much better now that it's kind of, you know, out in the open that I've uh, initially started. I, I, I tend to think of painting, right? Like, you know, you, you're going to paint a room. So the preparation to actually begin to paint is the worst. Once you actually start painting, you're like, oh, this isn't, this isn't so bad. But the preparation to actually start painting your walls, to painting your house, it's like crippling, right? It just puts you in a state of paralysis. And so I would suspect that the final days of Taurus season are going to be a little bit of a state of paralysis. Anxiety is going to be heightened because, of course, Venus is going to have her conjunction with Uranus here on the 18th. That is a jolt of energy that we just don't know what to do with. Yes, it's going to crack our heart space a little bit open for us to take a risk, for us to take a move, for us to be fully transparent and fully expressive with our thoughts, our ideas, our feelings, especially where some of these major changes need to take place. We've been holding it all in. We've been going through the process of what that's going to look like in our headspace, waiting for our physical body, our heart space to give some sort of reaction to the idea of what these changes would actually mean for us. But we're going to put this ball into motion and albeit the ball might get a little bit slow start rolling, right? We're looking at the ball like, are you even moving? However, once we move into Gemini season, again, guys, I've been saying, like, y'all need to learn how to really enjoy these pause moments, even though they feel a little bit uncomfortable, because once we hit Gemini season, there is a buzz. There is an acceleration in time. There is a, I'm going to call it excitable anxiety, because anxiety is just unfocused energy. There is a little bit of excitement, but we don't know what for. There is this hesitation that we are I'm going to say our ego self is trying to convince us that we should be hesitant. We should be resistant to jumping into all these changes. However, I feel like we're going to go balls to the walls if I do say so myself. And we're going to pick up the pace. And we're going to pick up our mood and our attitude. And we're going to feel lighter and we're going to feel fluffier. But there's going to be a lot of pressure in that headspace. Our heart space gets the pressure prior to Gemini season. Our head space gets the pressure throughout Gemini season. But... We're bossing up. We're taking our power back. We're standing more in a placement of control and authority over our thoughts and feelings than ever before. Yes, the frustration, the procrastination, the hesitation at the tail end of this Taurus energy is going to feel overwhelming. Again, Jupiter, star of the show this week, I would say. 
Jupiter magnifies everything. He turns the volume on everything and he over exaggerates. So there's a little bit of, I'm going to say extra-ness that comes when Jupiter is in play. So if you find yourself over the next couple of days frustrated, uh, just, you know, kind of sick of yourself, you know, I've, I had that a couple of times here today already. It's just like, oh, man, I am so sick of myself. Like, get out of my own damn way, self, you know? It's that kind of energy. We're going to feel the frustration. We're going to feel the intensity really hold on to us in this stuck pause type of energy as we close out this Taurus season and as we edge into the Gemini energy. So the heaviness, the achiness in our bones, I'm going to say the slowness, like the sloth type of vibe that we've been kind of operating in, that's going to come on pretty thick here over the next couple of days. I feel like there's going to be a lot of physical pain and aches, but there's a lot going on in our headspace. Our headspace is increasing. The buzziness is increasing. Uh, we are definitely exploring different thoughts, different attitudes. But until we break out of this heaviness, this weight of this earth energy, we're going to have a little bit more of a pessimistic, negative ass demeanor in our head space and in our heart space. And then, like I said, we move into Gemini energy and we just blow the doors off. We're like, screw it. Tired of this energy. We're going to pick a different narrative, pick a different focus. And again, the the focus, the concentration, the energy intensifies in the head space. And so again, uh, I'm going to use that, you know, excitable anxiety to kind of, you know, get the ball rolling here. But we have to really concentrate on our breath work. You may be choking on your breath, choking on your spit. Um, there is a tendency where our breath work is not regulated. It's been so slow. It's been slowed down. And so, yeah, that was absolutely the right thing to do throughout Taurus season. But in Gemini season, we need to become a little bit more aware that the pace of the energy is going to change, not only, you know, out in the cosmos, but in our physical body. So we're going to feel, I'm going to say, a ability to take a deep breath breath lung full of air and actually have it feel good but we're going to have to pace ourselves as far as the bouncing around in the headspace goes again mercury rules over the gemini energy and yes mercury is in this taurus energy trying to get us to connect with our physical body with the five senses with our ability to create a visual in our mind space and then listen to our physical form and how it responds to those particular ideas but the Gemini energy is very back and forth. It's up and down. It is the debate, again, between the old version of self, the new version of self, the ego self, the higher self. All of this throughout Gemini season is meant for us to find a new middle ground, a new common ground between our heart and our head, between our thoughts, between our ideas, between our narratives. Because again, when Gemini season comes to an end and we move into Cancer season, that solstice energy locks in our timelines, locks in the choices that we're making, locks in this next chapter. And this is why Gemini season picks up the pace. This is why we're being presented with new information, new options, new opportunities. Everything is just kind of turned up because we have to get ourselves in a, I'm going to say, position of certainty towards the end of Gemini season to lock in what it is that we're now going to be planning, strategizing, building towards. So in Taurus season, we had to become low and slow and stuck in the physical body and very aware of the physical form in order for us to figure out what is working and what isn't working. Now, we in Taurus season needed to focus on where we had to stabilize life. We were focused on you know what we had to build and create and bring to life. Well, the Gemini energy is now going to actually do the planning, the strategizing, the actions, the choices, the decisions, if you will, to actually start bringing those particular realizations into the physical form. So there's a lot of pressure on the head. 
that could mean I'm not going to call it a headache because it's not, but there's a lot of pressure and there's a moving pressure in our headspace. There's a lot of windows popping open in our headspace. We can be very dazed and confused. We could be very spacey and then all of a sudden have this like moment of brilliance, this aha moment, and then we take that energy, we start working with it until something else distracts us. Distractions are very big in Gemini season because again, everything like it's immutable energy. So there are options and opportunities and little glimmers of curiosity really piquing our interest in order for us to explore and research something different, right? We've been looking at the things that we want to stay the same, the things that are working for us and giving us a sense of safety, security, and stability through Taurus season, the things that aren't, now we're time, it's time to switch it up. It's time to really kind of, you know, apply that interest, that curiosity to bust out of our comfort zone. Again, busting out of a fixed earth energy in order for us to explore, to make some changes, to open up our mind space, to really kind of find new interests that we want to now start pouring into. So we're gonna have some big thoughts. We're gonna have some big feels because the whole point, and especially under that full moon in Sag, we're standing in a new truth. We're standing in a new perspective. We're standing in a new version of self. This new version of self needs to go on a new quest, a new adventure for stimulation, for experience, for deeper meaning, for deeper purpose. But even more than that, Venus, once she moves into Gemini energy, Again, the heart space kind of opens up to new ways of doing things, new ways of fulfilling one's wants, needs, and desires. There's a curiosity that breaks us away from the same old mundane, same old, same old uh, relationship dynamics. Just a side note, if you're not in a healthy, stabilized, let's call it semi-karmic relationship, you are, are likely going to experience turbulence while Venus is in Gemini energy. Why? Because we're, we get bored, basically. We're bored with the people that we're with. We're bored with the same old, same old. We're bored with settling. We're bored with discontentment. And therefore, again, we're on a quest to see if the grass is actually greener on the other side. Many people, and this is just, you know, doing readings for years and just watching the particular transits, Many people step out on their relationships. Many people break up with Venus and Gemini energy because curiosity literally kills the cat, so to speak. Now, that doesn't mean that they are making the best choices for themselves, but the mundane, you know, same old, same old, the, the boring, stable, I, I don't know, safety net, I guess, in our relationship dynamics just don't appeal to us anymore. And so again, we're looking for like a little bit of spice, a little bit of variety, if you will. And that creates major problems in relationship dynamics that are not as stable, not as karmically connected as they should be. Now, is that sad? Well, that depends on your perspective. I mean, many people are finding themselves in relationship dynamics that they have no business being in, but because they don't want to be alone or they don't want, you know, whatever the case may be, the delusions that they tell themselves, they would rather settle than to be by themselves. And so if you find yourself in a relationship that is very, I'm gonna say low connection, low karma, then there's a high probability that there's going to be information, details, options, and opportunities for you to explore other avenues. Again, major change of heart. When Venus moves into that Gemini energy, the whole point is to get the heart and the head on the same page. And I know that that is something that I say quite often is that's the whole name of the game is you have to get your heart and your head in alignment in order for you to engage the physical body to take action and make moves in the physical realm. However, I feel like with Venus in this Gemini energy, again, the back and forth inner debate, do I want to stay? Do I want to go? Do I like this or am I just bored? You know, the back and forth that we go through in our emotions, that becomes a little bit choppy, wavy, if you will, and can put us in some very interesting predicaments. Um, however, because it's taking place under the full moon in Sag, uh, we are going to see a bigger, broader picture be revealed. Now, whether that picture is a good picture or whether it's a bad picture doesn't really matter. We're going to have a new perspective, a new realization, and we are going to essentially feel like we are boosted in our optimism and our confidence 
and spiritually renewed, so to speak, in order for us to go on this new quest and new adventure for a new mission, new purpose, new meaning. Uh, we're definitely on a quest to fulfill ourselves in a totally different way. So of course, we can expect, especially as we head into that full moon energy, to be overwhelmed overwhelmed with excitement, overwhelmed with curiosity, overwhelmed with the want, need and desire to kind of pivot, take a different direction. Um, and of course, our mental plane is going to be rapidly processing new perspectives, new information, new details, new options, new opportunities, again, all over the place. Now, again, Gemini season offers us the opportunity to explore these different avenues in our heart space and our head space and our physical realms because we will align with the new path, a new direction, new wants, new needs, new desires towards the end of Gemini season. We will be leaning more into one option over the other that usually has us very divided at the beginning of the season. We won't be as divided towards the end of the season, but that is mostly because we have to adhere to a vibrational path that of course will get locked in once the solstice hits and that karma kind of gets locked in, resets us, clears away a lot of the options and opportunities, thoughts, ideas, and old versions of self that are fragmented and no longer strong enough to kind of stand the test of times for this new quest and adventure. And then, you know, we hit the ground running. So we're going to just expect some big changes, some big changes in our thoughts and our ideas and our feelings. Mostly this is going to be an overhaul of our mood, of our attitude. We're definitely going to feel lighter and brighter, which is a really welcome change, especially uh, the heaviness, the weight that many of us have been kind of overwhelmed with throughout Taurus season. Um, but with that, you know, once we shift into the Gemini energy, I would suspect that a lot of the achiness in our bones and in our physical form, that is going to subside. I would suspect that the hunger, the cravings, those are going to subside, but I do feel like the thirst is going to increase. So we want to stay super, super hydrated. Again, air energy. We need to keep hydrated because the air energy tends to, again, evaporate our emotions, our fluid in our physical form. So we have to keep up on that. The air energy is very intellectualized. So we do have to constantly be checking in with our heart space. Again, heart activations throughout this week as Venus kind of goes through her particular, I'm going to call it starring role. Uh, aside Jupiter as well. So there's a lot of different key players that are taking center stage here this week. And this is definitely going to have a major impact on our physical form. I feel like there's going to be a lot of throat clearing, not necessarily coughing, although if you are choking on your air, choking on your spit, you are going to have a little bit of a coughing fit. But there is a throat clearing. Again, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of communication, really has us kind of choked up. There's so many things that we want to do, that we want to explore, that we want to say, that we just like, you know, cluster F ourselves, if you will, in that throat space. And so staying hydrated, that's going to help. But the throat clearing is also us trying to get some things off off of our chest and especially when Venus moves into that Gemini energy we're going to be chatty Cathy's with our emotions with our thoughts with our ideas there's a lot of things that we've been holding hostage within ourselves uh, for I'm going to say quite some time but technically speaking just with Venus in this Taurus energy it was a fixed earth sign so again there was a lot going on in our inner realm that we weren't allowing to come out of our physical forms and now with the Gemini energy building like try to shut up. I dare you. Like nobody's going to be able to shut up. We just have a lot to get off of our chest and out of our bodies, right? We've been holding a lot in. Thus, the weight, the heaviness that we've been experiencing throughout Taurus season needing to be alleviated in a lot of ways. And there's no better way to do that than to put your energy in motion, which technically that is your emotions and get it out of your body. So with that being said, uh, it is going to be hard to kind of focus on one particular thing because, again, scatterbrain, we're all over the place. But the itchiness is definitely going to be a hot topic, a hot theme. Now, a lot of this, again, pay attention to where the itchiness is taking place in your body because that is a good indicator on where it is that certain aspects are healing. But right out of the gate, our eyes are itchy. OK, so what does that mean? Well, first of all, we have a lot of things that are changing in our realms and realities that we're maybe not quite on board with 
that's why we've been experiencing like gunkiness in our eyes and feeling, you know, like there's something in our eye over the last couple of weeks. We've been having a hard time really seeing the reality in the way that it is. We've been wanting to see it in the way that we want it to be. However, Gemini season is going to provide us with options and we haven't felt like we've had options in a very long time. And just the fact that we have options, even if we're still confused about them, even if they're not the most favorable options that we could have hoped for, options are options. And that in in respect to the ascension symptoms is a certain amount of growth. It's a certain level of healing. Therefore, our eyes are going to be itchy as F, mostly because we're in an air season. Air tends to dry us out. Again, another reason to stay hydrated. But the itchiness is an indicator that things are getting better. Things are healing. Things are coming to the surface. We're starting to resolve them. We're starting to settle into them. And again, options and opportunities being offered to you after we haven't felt like we've had options or opportunities for God knows how long, that in itself is a huge boss up. That in itself is a huge shift in our energy. And I feel, although itchiness is definitely going to be taking place in different different areas of the body as well, I think that the itchiness in our eyes and in our ears are going to be the greatest itchiness throughout the course of this week. And of course, with Jupiter involved, turning the volume all the way up and magnifying whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling and experiencing, we can be a little bit overwhelmed with the itchiness, uh, overwhelmed with the excitement, overwhelmed with the anticipation. We are ramping up and therefore it feels like we are being freed and liberated in ways that we felt stuck and paralyzed for a very, very long time. So with that time acceleration, we are also kind of seeing where it is that the chapters are changing, where our ability to see the changes actually come into fruition are changing. And that in itself is a very exciting thing. But of course, change can be scary as well. But here's the thing. We have to stay out of fear. Fear is the vibration of our egoic programming that wants to keep us in a state of paralysis, that does not want us to grow, does not want us to evolve. And so what we have to do is we have to label that as anticipation, as excitement instead of fear and hesitation. And what we can do with it is we can just tell ourselves that we're going on a quest, we're going on an adventure. And we have to be open to that. And especially under the full moon in Sag, that is what it's all about, is opening ourselves up to a new quest, a new path, new direction, new adventure. And so, yeah, of course, there is, again, logically and practically, we are humans. Our survival system, our egoic programming, prevents us from wanting change because we don't know what to expect in that change. Expectations are the key component of setting ourselves up for disappointment. So we want to not have any expectations, but think of it like going on a road trip. OK, yes, there is a particular destination that we would like to end up at. But sometimes the, the road trip to get there takes you on all of these beautiful little detours that you didn't plan on experiencing. You didn't plan on going to that actually turn out to be the best times. So we have to kind of fine tune our energy, our perspective, our emotions at this time to stay out of that intense fear that our egoic programming kicks in for the survival program to keep us alive. Of course, back in the caveman days, if you want to go there, they stayed within their own little territory because they knew what could happen in their territory. They didn't want to go beyond their comfort zone because that is a danger. They didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what to be prepared for. Our egoic programming is the exact same as it was eons ago. Its whole point is to try to keep this physical form alive. But we know at this point that we're on an energetic and spiritual quest to find happiness and joy here on this earth plane, that we're finding meaning and purpose in our quest, in our adventure, to simply be here, to be a part of it, to experience what we're here to experience. So again, we do need to constantly be keeping ourselves in check, reminding ourselves that change is not scary, and that even if we don't know what is beyond our comfort zone, that it could be an exciting thing. It could be way better than what it is that we are currently sitting in 
as uncomfortable and familiar as it may be. So we're going to be challenged to kind of, I'm going to say adopt that childlike childhood curiosity. You know, we always went on adventures, never knowing what we were going to be kind of putting ourselves, well, putting ourselves in the time and energy and space of when we were running through the woods, when we were building forts, when we were, you know, on these magical quests to go wherever it is that our childhood curiosity wanted us to go. So we really have to kind of get ourselves back into that type of mood and attitude. And of course, there is going to be a lot of epiphanies on the way, especially with that full moon in Sag, especially once Jupiter moves into that Gemini energy, we're going to be having a whole lot of downloads, whole lot of epiphanies just popping off left, right and center. Things are going to start making a lot more sense than they've made in the previous months. And we're just going to be, I'm going to say, renewed with hope and faith. We're going to be trusting ourselves, trusting the universe, trusting the greater, grander plan, just putting one foot in front of the other in order to kind of break away from this state of paralysis and open ourselves up to something new, a new quest, new adventure. So as far as the physical form goes, I feel like we're going to have some clammy, sweaty feet and hands. And again, we've talked about this before, but I feel like it's worth repeating. The connection of our physical bodies to Mother Earth, to Gaia, go through the feet. And so when we're having, you know, temperature changes in our feet, pins and needles in our feet, sweaty feet, this is the vibration, the frequency of us individually and Mother Earth herself kind of elevating in the vibration and the frequency of the ascension process. And so the connections, feet to Earth, that is going to change. And again, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that we're building towards this testing period where we're taking this new version of self out on the road for the first time and really testing our ability to create. And that's where the palm chakras come into. Those are our, I'm going to call them powerful little magic hands, magic wands, if you will, that have the ability to not only receive, but to project energy throughout our physical body. And we are bringing energies in now through our palm chakras. And we are trying to work out the bug. So again, you might have some shoulder stiffness, some elbow pain, some wrist uh, achies, if you will, some finger cramps in trying to get the energy to flow correctly. Now, there is a whole meridian system in our physical bodies that act as an information and an energetic highway. And where we kind of feel these aches and pains is where the energy is getting blocked first and foremost. And so that doesn't feel good. But again, you have to continuously be challenging yourself to move that energy, to do new things, to you know, keep the energy flowing as happily and healthily as possible throughout your physical form. But those pins and needles, that wave of energy, that fluctuating temperature, especially in the lower extremities, definitely going to be more intense this week than in previous weeks. And especially where Sag energy, this full moon in Sag and Jupiter specifically being on the center stage this week, that's like the upper thigh. So you may have Charlie horses, you may have spasms. This is us getting our ass in gear. This is us preparing to take action and make moves in the physical form. But there is some resistance because of the egoic programming, because of our cellular memory and our physical form to keep us standing still. So again, mind over matter. That is what we have to continuously remind ourselves. What we think in our mental plane, what we focus on, what we give attention to is what we're going to manifest here in the physical form. So although we may be aware of the hesitancy, the resistance of our physical bodies to actually take action and make moves to go in a, a specific direction, as long as we have a strong mental plane to override those particular inner dialogues and inner narratives, our mental plane is what gives us our power, not the physical form. So again, we're going to be challenged this week in our energy management, in our ability to kind of stay focused, stay concentrated on what it is that needs to be done, what it is that we want to build and create, what it is that we want to pursue. We will be able to kind of, I'm going to say nip in the bud, if you will, a lot of the dysfunctional actions that the egoic programming creates in the physical form. 
I also want to talk about the dreamscape, especially as we're moving out of Taurus season into Gemini season. Not only is our sleep going to shift yet again, hopefully for the better, but again, I know through Taurus season, many people have been sleeping a little bit more sound, a little bit deeper, a little bit longer, and in some cases having a hard time getting up and functioning at all. Again, the Gemini energy going to kind of break us out of that particular pattern. But the sleep pattern is likely going to be lighter, meaning you probably aren't going to sleep as deep. Why? Because the mental plane, the intellect is constantly going. Even when we're in a dreamscape, which again will change as well um, and be a little bit more, I'm going to say, profound in the revelations that we receive in our sleeping state. But also I feel like there is this, I'm going to say, constant mental processing even in our unconscious state. So when we're asleep, we're not really operating from the intellect, but because the intellect is coming off very strong here in Gemini season, it's almost like we are narrating our dream experience. We are dissecting, if you will, some of the cryptic messages that we're coming face to face and head to head with in our sleep state. Um, there is just going to be an overall shift, but that means a lighter sleep state. So we may not be as deep sleeping as we were in Taurus season. Uh, we may not get as much sleep as we did in Taurus season. So we are going to have to, again, balance out those particular energies. And again, with Gemini energy representing the twins, there's always going to be this inner struggle, this inner debate, this inner tweaking of finding that particular sweet spot. So things are just going to be rapidly progressing over this next week. And this is why I say and have said that we need to learn to enjoy the pauses a lot more because I suspect, not that I'm a betting girl, but if I was, I suspect that this time next week, everybody's going to say, oh my goodness, I feel manic. I feel, you know, all over the place. I feel like I haven't stopped. I feel like it's go, go, go. I just need a break. I just need a pause. Well, you, sh you had a whole month in Taurus season to do that. You should have really appreciated that when it was happening because we are essentially on go, go, go time acceleration mode from now until cancer season. So there's definitely a lot going on. But guys, I think that I've covered the highs, the lows, the everything in between that I wanted to cover for this particular shift in energies. Um, of course, there's going to be many astral forecasts coming at you throughout the course of this week with all the ever changing transits, along with, again, a Gemini season e-guide that I would really recommend that you all download. It is kind of like the essential Zodiac Bible walking you through all the energy shifts, what you need to be focused on, what it is that you need to be managing throughout Gemini season. So that's coming at you along with, again, brand new episode of the moon guide. So I am going to wrap it up here. I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for the love and support. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.